What's up everyone, this is Dr. David Song from the Rehab Hero Clinic and today we'll be talking about lumbar disc herniations and two tests that you can do to determine that, that diagnosis. Now with lumbar disc herniations, there are a few signs and symptoms that will make you start thinking that it is a disc herniation that you're experiencing. One is that you may experience sciatica. Now sciatica is just a term used to explain nerve irritation symptoms, particularly in the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve flows from the lumbar spine, goes through the buttock, down the back of the leg, down the calf and into the foot. Now with sciatica, you may experience spurring or electric sharp shooting pain down that same pathway. However, there are a few different diagnoses that causes sciatica to occur. So it's very important for you to consult your healthcare practitioner to diagnose or get assessed to figure out which cause is causing your symptoms. Now some other things that people with lumbar disc herniations cannot tolerate is just sitting down like I am right now. This is because with any type of lumbar flexion or slouch posture of the lumbar spine while you're taking a seat, it can add excessive pressure to the lumbar disc which will push it backwards onto the nerve root. Now when that pressure is applied to the nerve root, you can get sciatica type of symptoms. Now sciatica is not the only thing that tends to occur when you have a lumbar disc herniation. There are other signs that tend to happen. A, you may lose some type of sensation down one of the dermatomes of the sciatic nerve, uh, particularly L4, L5, or S1 pathways, which will start kind of from the knee down the inner aspect of the leg, into the front or top of the fo foot and toes, or up the lateral foot and up the lateral shin. These are some common sites for an L4, L5, and L5, S1 lumbar disc herniation to lose your sense of touch or for that sense of touch to get altered. Now this may include numbness or tingling, but it's not exclusive to numbness and tingling, which means it can be a lack of sensation as well. Now with an L4, L5, and L L5, S1 disc herniation, you may also experience motor weakness. What this means is a decrease in muscular strength. And this will particularly be in the L4, L5, or S1 myotomes. So the best way to kind of determine how these muscles may be affected is particularly if you've noticed any changes when you're walking. And that's because those same nerve pathways will affect foot function, particularly in the calf, or the shin, or even the quads and hamstring with knee extension and knee flexion. Weakness in these areas combined with everything else I've mentioned gives you the idea that it may be a lumbar disc herniation. Additionally, there are going to be some other investigations into your uh, deep tendon reflexes. This will be typically done by your chiropractor or a physiotherapist. They'll take a reflex hammer and they'll hit different um, tendons to elicit a reflex response. If there's a decrease or absent reflex uh, compared to the healthy side, then this may also give you an idea or lead you on to believing that's a lumbar disc herniation. But with all of that, um, some other symptoms that you may be experiencing is difficulty not only sitting, but also difficulty with anything related to a sitting position, like trying to put on a pair of socks, a shoe, or even trying to put on a pair of pants. These tasks may be difficult as it gets your spine to flex into lumbar flexion. Okay, so we're going to jump into the two orthopedic tests that are often done to help make the diagnosis of a lumbar disc herniation. The first exercise we're going to do is a little strange, it's a bit different. Um, and what we're looking at is that if, is if the nerve root gets irritated with an increase of intra-abdominal pressure, what your therapist will typically get you to do is to create a fist around your thumb, just like this. From here, they'll get you to get Put your lips right onto your left thumb of yours and you're going to blow into it as hard as you can without letting any air actually escape from the body. It'll look something like this. <sighs> Typically they'll get you to do that from anywhere between 5 to 10 seconds to see if that reproduces your symptoms, particularly the pain that you feel in the sciatica. This type of intra-abdominal pressure mimics some other types of activities of daily living, like coughing, sneezing, or straining when you're in the bathroom. If any of those three types of activities tend to reproduce your symptoms, then you want to consult your healthcare practitioner to get assessed for a lumbar disc herniation. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the straight leg raise. The straight leg raise is an exercise that, or is a movement that the physiotherapist or chiropractor will do 
to put tension on the sciatic nerve. Now, if, as you can imagine, if the sciatic nerve is already experiencing tension or compression due to the lumbar disc herniation on the nerve root, adding any other type of tension in the form of stretch can reproduce the symptoms and can re-irritate that nerve. So typically what this will look like is we'll be lying down face up. From here, the therapist will typically grab the leg and start raising the leg while the knee is kept straight. With a lumbar disc herniation, typically at 30 degrees, it will hurt. It will hurt quite a bit because that's enough of a stretch to cause the sciatic symptoms, sciatic symptoms to be reproduced. Now, technically speaking, if above 30 degrees that test does cause pain, it's still a negative test, and that's when the therapist will start to look at alternative or differential diagnoses to see what's going on. However, if it tends to happen that first 30 degrees or so, one may think, in combination with all the other things I've mentioned today, uh, it may be a L4, L5 or L5S1 disc herniation. So those are two tests that you can do to see if a patient has a lumbar disc herniation. If you enjoyed this quick rundown about how to diagnose a lumbar disc herniation, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more health-related content. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.